Flynn Dog Science with me, Caleb Flynn. Subscribe, like, comment, hit that bell. Fellow science lovers, what do you know about pressure, volume, and temperature, and how molecules in the gas phase affect and are affected by those three things? We're gonna use those three concepts to help us explain why this can crush when we put it in the water. Experiment one. I got my vacuum pump that I made. You should make one, they're real fun. And then I got my bottle. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my vacuum pump to pull the air right out of this bottle. And so since the walls are flexible in this bottle, we'll see how the number of air molecules inside affects the pressure and how the pressure changes the volume. So every time I pull back, it takes a little bit of air out of here and watch what happens to the volume. So each time I do that, think about as the air molecules are leaving, what's happening to the pressure inside? And as the pressure changes inside, what's going on with the volume? That's pretty squished. So let's look at a fresh water bottle. Inside, there's air molecules hitting the walls of the container. Outside, there's air molecules hitting the walls of the container. What happens if we remove the air molecules on the inside? The outside air molecules will hit the container more often. So what that means is the inside pressure is going down because the air molecules hit less often as we remove them. So what did we see the volume do when the, when the walls can change? Well, the volume gets smaller. And since the volume got smaller, that allows those inside air molecules to bang into the walls more often because the walls are closer together now. Makes it so those air, the remaining air molecules on the inside can hit more often and that raises the pressure back up so we can have an equalized pressure inside and outside. Another example now. Let's think about atmospheric pressure. The atmosphere, the air molecules in the air push down on water. They push on everything. They're pushing on you, they're pushing on me. Now, what if we take a little tube and we set it in the water upside down? The water won't go inside the tube because the air molecules in the tube are pushing down on the water. So they keep the tube essentially empty, right? You can see inside there, there's no water that really goes in the tube. Now, what happens if we take the air molecules out of the tube? Where's the water gonna go? Right, we pull the air molecules out of the tube and all of a sudden, the atmosphere pushing down on the water doesn't have anything pushing against it and so the water shoots up into our tube there. Let's add this now to our framework for why this can crushed. Here's a really straightforward one, thinking about how the air molecules and the water and the atmosphere connect. We'll take our syringe, and when you pull back on the syringe, what happens to the volume inside? We increase the volume inside. So where does air go when we increase the volume? You hear that? As we pull the plunger back, air rushes in. Right? We can see that visually. If we pull the plunger back, we pull the water in. So as we increase the volume, there's not very many air molecules inside that are pushing back. And so air or water are going to look to enter to equalize the pressure. Increasing the volume decreases the pressure. And so air molecules will want to rush in. Now what happens when we decrease the volume? Decrease the volume, increase the pressure, and so air, or water in this case, is going to rush out. And my balloon now, I have a set number of gas molecules. We can tell how hard the gas molecules are pushing on the walls based on how big the balloon is. So if the gas molecules inside, if they bang into the balloon walls more often and the pressure goes up, the balloon will get bigger. Whereas if they bang into the walls on the inside less often, then the walls on the inside will get smaller. So look at what happens when we drop this in hot water. It's not like a huge change, but we can at least see what happens to gas molecules when they start to heat up because we're going to put them in a hot situation. So 
So you see how much bigger that balloon got? It's the same number of gas molecules inside and then the balloon is pumping itself up. So what's going on? The molecules on the inside are moving faster as they get hotter and so they hit the walls more often and that makes the pressure go up. Now I got this jar, I got my like Erlenmeyer flask here and I put just a little water in the bottom and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna heat this up. So think about right now, there's the same number of gas molecules hitting the outside as hitting the inside over the surface area. And when we heat it up, what did we just learn? The gas molecules inside are gonna move faster. So if they start moving faster and the top is open, then the pressure is gonna stay equal. And how will the pressure stay equal? It can only stay equal if gas molecules leave. So watch what happens here. This is a cool one looking at atmospheric pressure. You ready? Few gas molecules on the inside moving faster. And most of the ones that are actually inside now are water vapor. So think about what goes on. Oh, the other really important thing, the glass walls, unless it explodes, they should not bend. There's gonna be very little flex in them. Did you see that? Look how cool that is. It just sucked up all that water. That is so cool. So I got a balsamic jar now. Let's heat it up. And I cut a hole in the top so it doesn't explode. I just took off the peel so we could see what happens a little more clearly. If you do try this, I'm gonna recommend trying it on uh, either very, very low heat if you have a gas grill, if you're using glass, or use an electric stove because I broke a lot of bottles trying to do this with the Bunsen burner and hurrying the process. The glass shatters. I have such a strong aversion to glass shrapnel. Sitting this close to this bottle always makes me a little nervous. Here we can see it's starting to come out the top now, all of our gas molecules. We could do this with just air molecules, but the glass would shatter before we were able to really get the inside hot enough. So putting some water in the bottom allows this to take place. So the only real gas on the inside is gonna be that water vapor, and then the water vapor will condense back into a liquid. So there'll almost be no gas molecules actually on the inside by the time this cools off. Let's try it. I think it might be ready. Let's see what happens when we cool off these fast moving gas molecules on the inside. Look at that, filling up on the inside. We didn't get quite as drastic there. Oh, it's hot. I'm gonna replace the lid at the top with this stopper that has a hole in it with a little tube attached. You always wanna make sure there's a little hole in whatever you put the lid on so pressure doesn't build up and it blows up in your face. Let's try it. We'll see if it works a little better with our little straw in here, we get a little more drastic result. Oh, cool, look at that, shooting out the straw. Oh, that's so awesome. Wow, it totally filled it up. Isn't that incredible? It totally filled it up. So what's that tell us about what's going on on the inside? Inside here, there were so few gas molecules, but they were moving really fast. And then when those gas molecules slowed down, and since a lot of them were water, they actually condensed. But if we had just had hot air, that hot air, once it slowed down, they would hit the walls less often and the walls can't change shape so that the, the molecules could keep hitting as frequently. So what had to happen to, to make it so the volume decreased, it sucked up that water. The air on the outside, the atmosphere was pushing down on the water and the air on the inside no longer could push against the water. And so it's like the outside pushed the water right inside and just made that super cool instant fill. I guess not instant, but really fast fill. That's really cool. The next experiment has already begun. Check it out. Crushing this can 
with our mind powers. Look at that. What do you think is happening? How are we crushing this can? You see it twisting, spinning around, volumes getting smaller. That's pretty cool. We're not even touching it. We're not even putting it in water and it's smashing. What do you think's happening? How can we explain this? It's still crushing. Let's put it in some water and see if that changes anything. Let's watch that sped up now so you can see what happened a little quicker. Now if I open the lid, let's see if it's happy or if it still wanted to crush a little more, just the walls won't let it. Did you hear that? It still wanted to crush a little more. There was still a little bit of suction in there. That is super cool. Here's how I did it. I heated up the can. There's a little bit of water just to kind of help the process, but it could work without the water if we could really get the air inside just really hot. And once I heated up the can, I put the lid on and took it off the burner. So why did it crush? What do you think happened? Think about the walls now. The walls aren't like the glass that are inflexible. These walls can totally flex. What happens to those gas molecules as they cool down? Are they hitting the walls as much? If they're not hitting the walls as much, what happens to the pressure? If the pressure changes, what happens to the volume? As the gas molecules slow down, they hit the walls less often. That causes the pressure inside to go down. Nature likes equal pressures. What happens? The volume inside the can has to change. And what does the can do? It starts to collapse so that the fewer molecules on the inside don't have to travel as far to hit those interior walls. Super cool. Back to our main thought. Why does the can crush? When you flip it upside down and put it in the water, this one's not heated up. It's not like it's crushing. Nothing magic about cans getting flipped upside down in water. Just like nothing magic about flipping a bottle upside down in water. Nothing happens. If you heat up gas molecules, they're going to want to expand. And as they expand, if you have walls that can move, that's going to make the walls get bigger. If you have walls that can't move, that would make them want to explode. Now, what happens when you take these hot moving gas molecules and then you cool them off? When you cool off those hot moving gas molecules, they slow down, then they're not hitting the inside of a container or whatever space they're in as often. So if they don't hit that, those walls as often, the pressure decreases. What has to happen in order for the pressure to go back up? In order for the pressure to go back up, we need to decrease the volume inside. So those fewer gas molecules can hit the inside more often. And that's what we saw with the water entering. As the water level rose, the fewer gas molecules that were in there could hit the walls more often and work to equalize the pressure. What happens to gas molecules that cool down and the walls can flex? If the walls can flex and the gas molecules cool down, it's going to cause the volume of the whatever shape it's in to decrease and that's gonna increase the pressure. And again, why is that? The gas molecules on the inside can hit the walls more often. So let's put all those pieces together now to figure out why the can does this. If we think about our can, our can has the same amount of gas molecules hitting the inside surface of the can as the outside when it's not heated up, when it's the same temperature as the external environment. So when we heat it up, the gas molecules leave the can. We have fewer gas molecules moving faster, fewer gas molecules moving faster inside the can. Then we cool down the can. And what happens to our gas molecules? They slow down. They hit the walls less often. So the pressure goes down and the volume decreases. 
but the volume decreasing just like we saw isn't quite enough to equalize the pressure so then watch what happens the can sucks up some water to decrease the volume even more so that those remaining gas molecules in the inside don't have so far to travel to equalize that pressure isn't that really rad i just think that's the funnest way to smash cans and hopefully as you do that now you can think about what's going on and why that can smashes. If you enjoyed learning about how gas molecules contribute to pressure and volume and how temperature mixes into that, then why don't you increase the pressure on your subscribe button and I'll see you again soon.